Daniel here for Tables Hot for One. Please join me at the table as I teach and play through After the Virus. And I thank you for joining me for this tutorial and solo playthrough of After the Virus. After the Virus is designed by Jacob Frixelius and published by Frix Games. And I had purchased this game along with the expansion, which I have yet to open. But this is an interesting little deck build builder about fighting zombies in a post-apocalyptic environment. Now, it's got some, uh, I guess you could say, questionable art decisions here. I think the art is a barrier to a lot of people. They look at this art and it doesn't look very attractive. But beneath this here, you're going to find a very interesting zombie survival game. And so we're going to go into setup now. And the first thing that you're going to choose is one of the scenarios here. You have a whole bunch of different scenarios and there are different uh, chapters in the story. So each of these scenarios will give you a little bit of the, the backstory and what you're trying to do. They will tell you whether they are short or medium or long in length of a game. And then of course, the further you get in the story, the harder the game is. For this tutorial video, I will be doing the get to safety scenario here. And the goal of this scenario is to end a turn with six saved survivors and a prepared facility. And I will have to start at wave one. Also, just to show you here, there are more scenarios on the back. So there's quite a few scenarios just in the base game. And the next thing you're going to do is choose a character to play. Now, I'm going to be playing Robert here. And what you need to know off of his card here is which cards he gets in his starting deck. And so he'll start in, in play with the leather jacket. He will gain as many zombies as there are players. So if you're just playing one character, you gain one zombie. And then you have a safe house, two times run, two times survivor, crowbar, food, guide, and crossfire. All those cards will be found in the main deck of cards. I've already separated them here. And so here's the leather jacket. Leather jacket en enters into play sideways. This is called unprepared. And then you'll see I have the rest of the cards here. And what I need to do at this point is add one zombie to this deck. The zombie deck itself is made up of all the zombies in numerical order with the most being at the bottom and the least being at the top. And this will always stay in this order. So anytime you return zombies to the zombie deck, you're going to return them in order. So keep that in mind. Then you're going to need these five wooden tokens here. The red ones represent wounds. When you take a wound, you're going to add it to the brain, the arm, or the leg here, and it's your choice. And then these two here are the wave markers and the survivor markers. The wave marker is going to be the white one here, and it's starting on wave one, and survivors are zero. We haven't saved any yet, and we got to work our survivors to six here. That's the goal. And the waves I'll explain in just a minute. All right, and after the virus, this is a deck builder game where you're going to be drawing five cards each turn and playing out cards and trying to achieve the goal of the scenario. But the interesting thing about this game is your deck gets zombies put into it. And when you draw them, they get put out in the playing field in front of you and you have to deal with them or they will attack you. And so after you've drawn your five cards, you're going to be able to do a whole bunch of actions. First, you can play an event card. Event cards are the pink cards, and they're pretty straightforward. They tell you exactly what they do. This one here says discard one zombie card. Now, this symbol up here is a cost for a card if you're buying it. Well, not buying it, but retrieving it uh, from the scouted card deck. And I'll show you that in just a minute. There's another event here is the safe house. And it, when you play it, you save one or more of your prepared survivors. The rest of these cards are going to be blue cards, which are non-event cards. And then uh, weapons here, like this one here. And they're going to do a variety of things. So let me go over some of these cards here. This is a weapon. Anytime you play one of your non-event cards, it comes in on your lineup here sideways. It's unprepared. Now you'll see the cost here in the corner to prepare the card. So in order to, to prepare both of these cards, it costs zero and you'll turn it into the prepared position. And now you're able to use what's printed here. Now the crowbar itself is a little different. It says discard one zombie when crowbar is prepared and then discard to discard one zombie. 
So you're going to get to discard two zombies out of this. So you want to keep it unprepared until you are being attacked by zombies. Then there's other ones here. These are the survivor cards. They're pretty straightforward. They're just used for being able to be saved with the safe house card. Now, of course, these come into play unprepared and you have a cost of one to prepare it. And when you pay a cost, you have to discard one of your cards from your hand. So let's say I discarded this run here from my hand. Now I get to prepare this and it's ready. And that way later on, when I play a safe house, save one or more of your prepared survivors, you can go ahead and save as many survivors as you'd like that are currently in the upright position, the prepared position. You also have some traps that you can deploy. And again, this one costs one to prepare it, but you can discard it to kill one zombie for each prepared person you have. And that actually includes your player character too. So. If it, if it was this case here, I have two prepared persons. You see it says person here at the top and also here at the top. And so if I discarded Crossfire in this case, I would be able to kill two zombies that are out on the board. And I have two more cards to show you here. We have the guide. He's pretty straightforward. Doesn't cost anything to prepare him. And you can discard him to remove two zombies from a discard pile. That's your discard pile. And so I'll, I'll explain uh, remove and kill in just a moment because those are important terms and discard there there are th three important terms and this next one here is doesn't cost anything to prepare and if no zombies are in play put it on the top or the bottom of the area deck which is this big deck here and you get to heal one wound and so those are your starting cards there's a whole bunch of other cards that you might have access to at a later time and, and so we'll go over those as they come up and so now I want to talk about a couple of, of the other actions that you can do besides playing the cards from your hand. You can perform a scout action. That's where you discard one card from your hand to check out the top card here. And you'll just lay it out in front. And this will become part of a market that you can buy cards from. And so in this case here, we have a chainsaw. And so that's a pretty cool card because you can discard it to kill six zombies and then it only costs two to buy it. Now, when you buy a non-event card, it actually comes into your play area unprepared. So that's pretty nice, but it does cost two cards to buy it. So you have to discard two cards to do what is the other action called retrieve. And that's where you retrieve one of the cards from the scouted cards here. But yeah, this is a pretty cool weapon here. That would be nice to have if I had that chance. All right, so after you're done using all your actions, what's gonna happen is a zombie attack is gonna happen. And so any zombies that are in front of you that have been played out of your hand because you had to play all zombies out of your hand in front of you, they are going to attack. And so if this was the case here and I didn't have any way to defend myself, I would take one, two, three damage. Now there are ways that you can use to defend yourself. This guy in particular starts out with a leather jacket where I can destroy this card, meaning remove it from play, and prevent my next two wounds this turn. So if I did it in this case, I would prevent two of these here, and this other one would still attack. Of course, I have the crowbar here, which lets me discard a zombie. Now, there is an important thing that you need to understand when it says discard one zombie or discard one zombie card. There's a difference. See, on some of these cards, there are multiple zombies. So two, three, and four. And so if you were to discard a zombie off of this card, it doesn't discard the zombie itself. So in the crowbar, in the case of the crowbar here, if it was in the unprepared position and then I prepared it to discard one zombie when it's prepared, I discard one of these, but there's still one left. So I have to do something with that card. So then I could discard this crowbar to discard one more zombie and discard the second zombie in that card. And so in that case, since both of these were discarded, or at least one of them was, then this card is gonna end up going into my discard pile. So it'll appear again. And that goes to uh, show that it's important to try and kill and remove zombies. See, there are certain cards like the crossfire trap here. This is discard to kill one zombie for each pre prepared person. That will kill a zombie. And when you kill a zombie, you take the zombie cards and you place them back on top of the zombie deck. Of course, keeping the order that it is in. So you will not find a two zombie on top of a one zombie. So keep that in mind. And then of course, the other way is to remove them 
which is through the guide here, discard or remove two zombies from your discard pile. So if I had this two zombie card here, I could use the guide if he was in play to remove this. And then this would of course go back into this deck here and out of my deck and that would be good. Now one last way zombies die is when they attack you. So anytime a zombie attacks you, you're gonna automatically fight them off, but you're gonna gain wounds if you don't defend against them. And so in this case here, if he was just a straight on attack me, I would gain a wound to my arm or my leg, and then he would die. So he'd go back to the zombie pile here. Now let's talk about wounds. Wounds are very important to understand because depending on which of the part of you that gets wounded, it's going to have a detrimental effect. So if you're wounded in the leg, you can no longer play run cards like this card here. If you're wounded in the arm, you cannot hold two weapons at the same time. You can only hold one. And if you're wounded in the brain, you're dead. Now the way you gain zombies into your hand is every time you run out of cards in your deck and you have to shuffle your deck and redraw. Let's say I had two cards left here in my draw pile and the rest of these were in my discard and we are at wave one. Now I need to draw new cards for the next turn while well, I can only draw two and then I have to move the wave up one space then add that many zombie cards from that wave into my discard pile. So in this case, it would be two, they'd get added in. And then we're gonna shuffle this up and then we're gonna draw the three cards that are owed to me because I only have two right now. And so we add those three in there and then I have my five cards and then we look at them and lo and behold, there's a couple zombies that automatically come into play that next turn. All right, so I'm all reset back here and I'm gonna remind you that the goal of this scenario is to end a turn with six survivors saved. So this green marker up to number six and a prepared facility in play. Now, Robert himself, he does not come with a facility in his deck. There are some that can, like for instance, Ruth here, she comes with a pub in play, so that's a facility. So really, I should be choosing Ruth for this challenge, but I've been trying to beat this challenge with Robert and I've been failing every time. I'm gonna keep trying it until I can win this challenge with him. And so now we're ready to start. There's a few other outlier rules that I'll, that'll come into play and I'll explain them as they do. All right, so the first thing we do is we draw the five cards and let's see what we have. You're gonna look for zombies right away and I do have one zombie. It comes into play in front of me. So I do need to deal with that at some point, but actually, I have a run so I just play the run it goes in my discard pile which discards a zombie and so he goes into my discard pile next up I have a few different things here I definitely want to have the guide out in play and so it comes in unprepared but you can go ahead and prepare it because it doesn't cost anything and then I also have the crowbar I'd like to have that as defense so that comes in unprepared and then I have the trap here I could play it in unprepared and have it ready, but I wanna scout. I wanna see what's available here in this deck. So I'm gonna discard this card to scout for one card and let's see what we get. And we have an antidote here and it says destroy to prevent your next wound this turn. And it doesn't cost anything to prepare. That's a pretty nice card. So if I wanna buy this card or retrieve it, I have to discard a card to pay the cost of one here in the top left corner to gain it to my play area. And I'll probably end up doing that the next turn. Speaking of which, I have no more actions to do. And so we're gonna go on to the next turn here, drawing five cards. And let's see what we have. We don't have any zombies because we start out with just one zombie in the deck. And so we do have some survivors here. Now we definitely want to uh, rescue survivors. So we might wanna put these into play. And let's see, I'll just put them up here. Now they're in play unprepared. Now if I want to make them prepared, I have to spend two cards to make them prepared. And I can do that actually. We have a food and a run here that I don't really need right now. So I discard both of these, one for each survivor to prepare them. And then right now I can play the safe house and rescue both of them. And so they will go into my discard pile. I will gain two rescue, bringing that marker up to two. And now we move on to the next 
turn, but here's the thing, I have nothing to draw. So now we have to increase the wave marker by one, and then we're gonna add that many zombie cards into my discard piles, in this case two, and then we'll shuffle these, and let's see how this turns out for me. I hope I don't draw too many, but I do have a crowbar in play, so I have some things that'll work out. It's early on in the game, so it's not too much pressure from the zombies yet. Well, let's see, <laughs> yep, I got both of them. Well, I still have one more in there. And I really wanna have these survivors out. So I'm gonna play both of these survivors out, but I'm not gonna prepare them yet. And I have the one run. And so I will use the run to discard one of these zombies. And then I will use the crowbar by preparing it. It says discard one zombie when the crowbar is prepared. So I discard one zombie here. And then on top of that, I have the guide. We're gonna go ahead and use the guide. And so the guide says discard to remove two zombies from the discard pile. And so these two zombies here get removed and placed back in the zombie pile. And then I discard the guide here. That was a rather productive turn, I think. Let's draw our next five cards here, which is all we have in our deck. And we do have one zombie to contend with, but I have one run to take care of that zombie. So I will do that discarding this zombie. Now I have these three cards here. Now I could rescue these survivors by playing or discarding these two cards to prepare these two cards. And maybe that's the right play, but I don't know. I don't know if I should try and shore up my defenses a little bit, but I don't wanna waste the, the safe house. What, well, actually, what if I use the safe house and the food? Let's see, actually, <laughs> now that I think about it, let's play the crossfire here and then use the food to arm the crossfire or prepare it. So now it's ready. And then I will discard the safe house to prepare one of these survivors. And now it's the next turn, but I have no cards to draw. So we're gonna increase the wave by one, adding three zombie cards to my discard pile and shuffling this again. Now, as you notice, it's nice to have a lot of cards out in play, but the thing is, is it thins out your deck, which means you're gonna draw zombies more often. So you have to be careful with that balance. And so our first five cards here are three zombies at once. Woo, that's not good. But I actually think I can get rid of them. Let's see, we will use uh, or discard food to prepare the survivor. And now we can use the crossfire trap. So this one here, again, says discard to kill one zombie for each prepared person I have. I have my person and then two other persons here. So that's three total killing off all three of these zombies and they're killed. So they go in the zombie pile. The crossfire trap gets discarded and I have one card left, a run. Uh, there's no zombie cards to discard, but I can either scout or retrieve with this card. So that's uh, the question here. I do like this antidote. Destroy to prevent your next wound this turn. That's really nice. So I will discard this to retrieve that card. And it comes into play, but I can prepare it right away because it costs zero to prepare. But since my deck is so thin, I have four cards to draw here. It's not enough. So I have to increase the wave one more time. And we're gonna draw four cards into this discard pile, which means most likely, I, I mean, the odds are that I'm gonna get zombies out of this. We'll see how this goes. I draw one more card and well, I only have one zombie. That's not too bad. And I have one run. So I could use that right now to get rid of that zombie, discarding it. And then let's see, what do I wanna play? I wanna play the safe house, right? Because I wanna get the survivors. So we rescued both of these survivors gaining two to the survivors. So now I have four, I just need two more, but I still need a prepared facility. But I also like having this trap out, hmm. What if I discard the guide to scout a card and let's see what we get. All right, a tunnel and it's a facility. Okay, so this card here is gonna cost two cards to retrieve it. When I prepare it, I need to discard the safe house to prepare it, okay. And then it tells me later that preparing persons is free. That's really cool, but I can't get this just yet. As for the crossfire trap, I will bring it in unprepared because I may need to use it soon. And so now we're drawing five cards and uh, we got a lot of zombies here. All right, this is gonna make things a little difficult. Now we do have some food here too, and I have a run. I wonder if I should bring the food into play. I'll, I'll prepare it right away because it costs zero. If no zombies are in play, put, the, put on the top or the bottom of the area deck to heal one wound. I may need that in just a minute. We will use run right away to discard one of these zombies. 
And then we'll discard the crowbar. It says discard to discard one zombie. So that works. And so we'll let the zombie attack happen before we do anything else. And so the zombie attack's gonna attack. It's gonna hit me and we'll let it hit the leg. It'll die in that attack. But then now we can use the food equipment. And it says if no zombies are in play, put it on top or bottom of the area deck. We'll put it on the bottom of the area deck and I'll heal one wound. So that's really nice. But here we are, <laughs> we're gonna need to shuffle our deck again and increase the wave. We're adding five zombie cards. Uh-oh, that's a lot of twos there. Uh, I, I should have killed more zombies, I think. Maybe I shouldn't have got rid of my guide because he needs to remove zombies from the discard pile. This is gonna be really interesting. We'll see how it works out. And so I draw four more cards here. All right, ooh, this is not good. Five of these here. All right, so I can't use the survivor right now. I, I just can't. I'm gonna be taking too much damage, I think. I don't know, it's, it's really risky, right? Because there's different things I could do. I could discard the survivor to prepare the crossfire trap, activate the trap to kill one zombie, so one of these cards, and then use my leather jacket and the antidote, which will prevent a total of three next wounds, and only gain one wound. Or I could bring out the survivor in the unprepared position, and then I'll have to end up taking two wounds instead. I don't have the means to heal right now, so but I do have a couple of runs in the deck. Oh, the choice is here. I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna take the two wounds. No, actually, <laughs> sorry. I'm not gonna take the two wounds because if I take a wound on my leg, I can't use run. So we're gonna discard the survivor. We'll prepare the crossfire trap, use the crossfire trap to kill one zombie. Then we'll destroy both of these cards. So these get removed out of play and that'll prevent three damage. So I'll only take one damage and we'll take it to the arm. And so all of these zombies die here. Now again, we need to put these in order. So this one comes on top here. And now we're ready to draw five more cards. There's still a lot of zombies in the deck. So I'm really worried about this. Okay, it could be worse. It's not the best. <laughs> Let's see. I have a survivor and a safe house and a crowbar. Well, the crowbar is going to be able to get rid of two zombies. So if I bring it out, prepare it to get rid of one zombie here and then discard it to discard the other zombie, though it'll go in my discard pile. But now what do I do with these? Do I use this to get the tunnel? Is it worth it? Or do I use one of these to scout? It's such a tough choice. I think I'm gonna get the tunnel. It's gonna come into play unprepared. I don't know that that's the best choice. This zombie's gonna attack me and hit my leg. And so now I'm really close to dying. But we don't have to increase the wave yet. I'm sure I do have some zombies coming. Let's see how this works here. Yep, there's some zombies. And the problem is, is I have the guide here and I have runs and my legs wounded so I can't run. So at this point, these three zombies are gonna attack me and I'm gonna die. All right, so I'm gonna do something I haven't done before and I'm gonna play again. Now, you can feel free to skip to the end if you'd like, but I'm gonna try this again. This time I will play with Ruth. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset this and get this set up with Ruth. All right, and so I have Ruth all set up here and she's got a different starting deck. So I'm gonna go over some of the cards with you here. She has the pub facility here, which is gonna start out and play on sideways, of course. And so it's gonna take a survivor to prepare it. But when you play a safe house, you're gonna heal one wound. So that's gonna be really useful. So we'll have that in play and it'll be a facility and count towards that goal of having one prepared facility. Now she comes with a safe house and three survivors this time, and of course one zombie here, but she also has a shotgun. And so shotgun has a mechanic called ammo that I haven't gone over before, but when you prepare it, you discard cards up to the number. Now this is X, so you can discard as many as you want, and those will become ammo. So what you do is you take the cards and you set them underneath the card like this, and now that's your ammo. So when you discard an ammo, you will be able to use that weapon to shoot the uh, the zombies. And so in this case, that would have been three ammo that I had available. And then you can destroy the shotgun to kill one zombie as well. And so one of the other cards here is a magazine. Place the magazine as an ammo on your prepared weapon. That's pretty nice. This one here is a an entrenchment trap and in discard to kill two zombies. That's really cool. I actually kind of like this deck. Maybe it's designed for this particular scenario. I don't know. 
But trapper skill here. It says each time you prepare a trap, kill one zombie. Wow, those are really nice. And then blockbuster trap, destroy to kill all zombies in play and discard pile for one player. Whoa, but it takes three cards to prepare that one. So there's a, a lot of really good cards here. So this will be an interesting thing. You'll get to see some new cards and the new ammo mechanic that I hadn't shown you yet. So, and so here we go. We'll draw five cards here. And of course we have a zombie in play already. Now, if you notice, I don't have any runs or I don't have the crowbar, nothing to discard zombies. So I definitely have to use these traps and other means to uh, kill the zombie. First of all, I'm going to use the survivor to prepare this. Now that's in play. And then I'm going to play the shotgun here. And I think I'll play the entrenchment trap. Uh, sorry, it's, it needs to be sideways. And then I will prepare it by discarding the magazine. I know I could use the magazine for the shotgun, but I don't know that I want to use that yet just yet because I want to probably load this up with a lot of ammo. So with this one here, I will discard it, as it says on here, to kill two zombies. Well, there's only one in play, but he dies. And next we draw five cards here. And so our next card's here, a couple survivors, the safe house, the trapper skill, which is really nice, and the blockbuster trap. I don't know that I'm gonna use these two right away. I definitely wanna have the survivors out because we wanna start saving survivors. So what if I use these two and then discard these two pre to prepare the survivors, turning them up, and then using the safe house to rescue both of them? Because I definitely wanna get ahead. Sorry, I had the tokens here swapped. And so now we have two survivors and we're still in wave one, but we're about to go to wave two right now because I can't draw any cards. And so we'll add two zombies to the deck and shuffle this up. All right, here's our draw for the round and we have no zombies, so let's get prepared. We definitely want the entrenchment trap, but I'm gonna save that to prepare it for the next round because we're gonna use the trapper skill, I think. There's also survivor here. And we have a magazine we can load into the shotgun. There's all sorts of things that we can do here. I won't be able to use the safe house right now. I mean, I could to try to save one survivor, but maybe it's worth waiting on that. So let's see. We will play the entrenchment trap and the trapper skill. And then I need to discard two cards. We'll play the survivor. Actually, yeah, we'll play the survivor. I'm really thinning out my deck here. And we'll discard these two cards. Actually, I'll discard one to scout because maybe I should be adding more cards here. There's a rifle, so that might be worth getting in a little bit. And then I will discard this magazine to prepare the trapper skill. So we're gonna get this ready because we're gonna have some zombies in the next turn. And so we draw the last five cards of our deck here for the next turn. We definitely have our two zombies here. We do have two survivors, which is kind of nice. And then we have the blockbuster trap. I don't think I'm gonna use the blockbuster trap, but right now, I think what I'm gonna do, this is kind of risky, but I'm gonna play both survivors out here. I wanna keep them out here. We wanna rescue a bunch of them. And then I will discard the blockbuster trap to ready the entrenchment trap, which lets me use my trapper skill to kill one zombie. So this one dies. And then I'm gonna let the zombie attack me and I will take a wound to my arm. That just means I can't have two weapons. And so he dies in that attack. Now this is super risky because I only have three cards in my discard pile. We're going into the next round. And so we're gonna add three zombies to this. I'm gonna draw five cards and we're gonna hope that I only gain two zombies. That, that's definitely the hope, but it's not gonna be the worst thing if I gain all three because I think I can kill all three. Let's see how this goes. And so we draw and sure enough, we have all three. Okay, so what we can do to make this happen. We definitely wanna use up some of the cards here. And I can discard the entrenchment trap right now to, to kill two zombies. So two of these are gone right away. That's easy to do. Now, as for these, I think I'm gonna load them into the shotgun. So we'll ready this. We'll gain two ammo into the shotgun, and then we'll use one ammo to get rid of this zombie here. So that was nicely played, but we are going into another round here where the wave is increasing. We're adding four zombies to this. So one, two, three, and four. I guess my deck was completely devoid of zombies. So, but I'm gonna draw a whole bunch of them right now. I don't know if this is gonna be good for me, but let's see what happens. So we draw one, two, three, four, plus the one I already had here. 
And let's see, only two zombies. So how are we gonna play this out? Now I can play the, oh man, look at this. There's a lot going on here because I really wanna use two of these to prepare survivors so I can rescue them with the safe house, get healed one wound. Oh, choices, choices. But if I get the trap out and activate it, I'll kill two zombies. No, I need to get the survivors rescued. And the reason why I need to do that is I need to get more cards in my deck here. We'll discard these two here. Oh boy, I don't know this is a good idea. <laughs> and to prepare these two, and then we'll play safe house and we're going to rescue these two. So now we are at four survivors. This game is gonna be really close. Now when I play safe house, I get to heal a wound, so that's healed. And now I get to use an ammo from the shotgun, right? To shoot one of these guys, so he's dead. And then I guess I'm gonna take the hit again, back to the arm. Oh, so risky, but he dies. I hope that was worth it. <laughs> We're going on to the next round here. So the wave is now going up to five. We have two cards already. We're adding these five here to the deck and look, it's gonna be a couple of two zombie cards. Oh, this is, this is gonna be really close, I think. I know I should possibly spend more time scouting, but I have everything in my deck I need to uh, win this one. I just need to play the cards the right way. And I don't know that, I don't know that I'm good at this game. <laughs> it's, it's so challenging. All right, so here we go. Three zombies. Now there's only one thing I can do here. I can play the entrenchment trap, use the magazine to ready that trap, which the trapper skill kills one off, and then discard this to kill the uh, other two off here. And that saves me for this round. But I am gonna run into some issues here. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, let's see what we have here. All right. Oh no, no, say it isn't so. This is not good. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow, I do not think I can survive anything here. Yep. Oh man, what a bad draw. My last three cards here. Look at that. Oh man, what an awful draw. <laughs> Maybe I should have got that rifle earlier so I could have had two weapons available because right now all I can do is destroy my shotgun to kill one zombie and then I'm gonna take five wounds. There's nothing else I can do. And so there you have it. That is another tutorial solo playthrough as I teach you how to lose very badly at after the virus. I, I apologize, I, I tried to win, but sometimes it's just not in the cards. And so let me know in the comments what I should have done better if you played this game and you saw uh, that I didn't play my cards right or something. Let me know what I should have done better. Please also like and subscribe to this channel if you like the content you see here. And if you'd like to support me on Patreon, I have a link in the description and I appreciate everybody who has supported me thus far. And I thank you very much for joining me on Tabletop for One. Have a great night.